so excited to be back with you today. Remember, my name is Mrs. Papineau, and I get to spend another day learning with you all about wondering while we read. Remember, in our last lesson, we got to start a great story called Pet Show. Before we get started today, I thought it would be a good idea for us to retell what we remember from the story so far. A lot of times readers will take a peek at the story to remind themselves exactly what it was all about. Let's look at the pictures together. Hmm. At the beginning, I remember that Archie and his friends saw this really great sign that said, Pet Show, Prizes, Saturday at 11. And they all got really excited and they all decided they would bring their own pets to the pet show. Do you remember what Archie wanted to bring? Right, he wanted to bring his cat. So I remember, now that I see this picture, that he spent a lot of time looking around for his cat, but couldn't find it very well. He kept looking and looking. I remember his mom saying that the cat was really independent kind of did his own thing. So that might be one of the reasons why he was hard to find. I remember Archie was kind of bummed out because he couldn't find his pet. And I remember all of the kids raced to the pet show. Remember that? And I remember how at the pet show, they all got in a line and the judges started going by and asking them questions about their pets. And the other thing that I remember when I look at this page is that everyone got a prize for something. So each pet and each owner got a prize. And then right before we ended, I remember that Archie came running with a pet that he had found that he wanted to put into the pet show. And right at that same moment, do you remember what happened? Let's look carefully. Do you see what I see? Look at who showed up, right? The cat, and right at that moment, this lady got awarded the blue ribbon for the cat with the longest whiskers as Archie watched. And that's where we left off. So readers, now that we've gotten caught up and retold the story from yesterday, Let's take a moment to remember exactly what it means to wonder. So remember, wondering is a strategy that good readers use to ask questions about their text before, during, and after they've read. It's a way to make meaning as you read. Now, we did a lot of practice yesterday about wondering before we read this book and while we were reading. And I'm wondering, before we start and finish this story today, what you might be wondering about how this story goes. So remember, for these lessons, it's very helpful to have a partner to turn and talk to. Remember, that can be all kinds of folks. It can be someone that's in your house with you. It can be a pet. It can be a stuffed animal. And remember, you can give me a call on our pretend phones. So readers, right now, I want you to think about what are you wondering right now about the rest of Pet Show? Do you remember the things we can say when you wonder? Let's look. Remember, you might say, I wonder if, I wonder what, and I wonder who. I'm going to get my turn and talk partner right now. Oh, friend Fox, here he is. Hi, friend Fox, how are you today? Oh, good. Friend Fox, what are you wondering about how the story is going so far? Do you have any wonderings? Hmm, shall we ask our kindergarten and first grade friends? Awesome, let's show our chart. Come on, friend Fox. Hmm. Friend Fox and I heard a lot of really good thinking. 
I wonder if any of you out there are thinking about these questions. I wonder what is inside Archie's bag. Me too. I wonder what he brought. I also heard another student ask, I wonder if the lady will keep the blue ribbon. Oh, right. Yeah, because the cat isn't hers and she got a ribbon for it. Wow, that's something to think about. And finally, I wonder if Archie will say the cat is his. Ooh, yeah, I wonder if he'll say, wait, wait, that's my cat. I guess we're going to find out now. Your brains are super ready because you did some great wondering before we read. All right, time fox, let's put our chart up. Let's read today's story. Do you remember where we left off? How about I read a few pages just to get you caught back up? Here is where we stopped. This page says, the other judge called out a blue ribbon to the nice lady for the cat with the longest whiskers. Before anyone could say anything, he pins a blue ribbon on the old woman and came back to Archie. What kind of pet have you got in that jar? A germ, answered Archie. Hey, we just answered one of our wonderings. Inside Archie's bag was a jar with a germ. What is a germ? Well, a germ is a tiny living thing that we can't really see. And sometimes it can make us sick. That's why we wash our hands. He's saying he's captured a germ in this jar. Hmm, and what's your germ's name? Archie thought for a moment. Al, he said. The judges whispered. A blue ribbon for Al, the quietest pet in the show, the judges announced. Announced is a way of saying, well, they told all the people. So the judges said, the quietest pet in the show goes to Al. They announced that. As everyone was leaving, the old woman came over to Archie. He's really your cat, isn't he? She said, you should have the ribbon. It's okay, Archie said, you keep it. And he ran to join his friends. They passed the old woman on their way home. Thank you for the ribbon, she called. Archie smiled. It looks good on you. See you around. See you around, she said. And that's the end of our story. Readers, will you please turn to your partner and share what has happened in the part we just read together? Ready? Turn to your partner. friend Fox. Yeah. Oh, friend Fox just told me that Archie got his own prize for his own pet, Al. Oh, yeah, I agree. Should we take a call? Okay. <gasps> Another first grader said, hmm, Archie Let's the woman keep the blue ribbon for the cat. Yeah, it's true. That's exactly what happened at the end. She asked if Archie wanted it back, and he said, no, you can keep it. Wow. Fern Fox, that was such a great story. I really enjoyed it. And wondering along the way really helped me understand the story even more. Now, 
I have some questions for you, friend Fox, and for all of our friends out there listening. Hmm. Why do you think Archie was awarded the blue ribbon for his pet? Give me a call. Oh, friend Fox, are you raising your hand? Uh huh. And what do you want to say? Oh, friend Fox is remembering that in the text it said that every kid was getting an award for their pet. Every single kid. Let's go back and look in the text where that was. Because I think you're right. Let's look. Oh, look. It says everyone got a prize for something. That makes sense. So maybe that's why Archie got a prize for his pet germ owl. Hmm. I have another question. Why do you think that Archie told the woman she could keep the blue ribbon? Remember, there's no right or wrong when it's a what you think question. Use your great brain and think. Oh, friend Fox, more ideas. Oh, friend Fox says he thinks that Archie just wanted to be nice that he wanted to show that he cared about the old woman and wanted her to have a blue ribbon too. Thumbs up if that was your idea. I bet there's some more ideas out there. I'm getting phone calls. Yes. Oh, I had a kindergartner call in and tell me, Miss P, Archie already had a ribbon, so he didn't need to. He could share and let the woman keep the one that she got to. Wow. Great thinking. Hmm. I agree. Exactly. You know, we're at the end of the story, but does that mean that we stop wondering? No. We get to keep wondering. We get to keep our minds moving. So I would like you to turn to your partner right now and share what if something you still wonder at the end of this story. So let's go back to the end. Let's just double check and remember where, where we ended. Okay, it says... They passed the old woman on their way home. Thank you for the ribbon, she called. Archie smiled. It looks good on you. See you around. See you around, she said. So take a moment. What do you still wonder? Friend Fox and I will get our chart to see if our wonderings match up. Pretty good thinking out there going on, I can tell. I wonder if any of you wondered this. I wonder if there will be another pet show. Ooh, thumbs up if that was your wondering. Yeah. I had another student call in and say, I wonder what Archie will do with the germ. Oh yeah. Will he release it? Will he keep it in the jar? Thank you for sharing that one. And how about this one? I wonder what Archie and his friends will do next. Yeah. Will they have another pet show? Will they come up with a new idea? Hard to say. Great job, readers. Now, you might remember we learned yet another new word in this text. It is the word brag. Here's what the word looks like, brag, B-R-A-G. If you brag, it means you're kind of talking about yourself as though you're really proud. Another way is talking with pride. A lot of times people feel like maybe bragging isn't the most friendly thing to do in the world. So a lot of times bragging has to do with how you feel on the inside too, like whether or not you're trying to maybe show off or not show off, right? Because it's okay to be proud of yourself. In fact, you should be proud of yourself. But if you're trying to be proud to push somebody else down and make them not feel so great, then you might be bragging. Let's take a look at some examples. Look at these two boys. How do you 
you suppose they might be bragging in the pictures? Maybe it is one boy trying to say, I'm so strong, look at me. He is talking with pride about his strength. So he might be bragging. Let's look at this picture though. Wow, this boy looks really proud. Look at that huge tower he made all by himself. He looks proud. Now, what would turn it to bragging? Maybe if he came and said, Mrs. Papineau, my tower is so much better than your tower. That's like extra pride, right? That's like pride that's trying to make somebody else feel kind of bad. So let's imagine that you went on a trip to Disneyland and you came back and you were really excited to see all of your friends and tell about your trip. Now, would you brag about going to Disneyland or not brag? I don't know. It's up to you. If I wanted to use this word, I might say, I would brag because, or I would not brag because. So, hmm. I wouldn't want other people to feel like sad or bad that they didn't get to go to Disneyland like I did. So I might say something like, I would not brag because it would hurt someone's feelings, right? Hmm. But let me think of a time I might brag. Oh, hmm, I know. I think I'm a really good driver, but my husband thinks he's a better driver. So I would brag because I feel like I'm a really good driver and I'm really safe. And I feel proud about that. So I'm going to brag a little. Can you think of a way that you could practice this word? Maybe you can think of another scenario that you could act out at home. Let's pretend that you got a brand new Lego set. And you're super excited about it. And you figured out how to build it all on your own. Then let's say you go to school. Would you brag about your Lego set? Or would you not brag about your Lego set? I know, tricky, right? Brag is one of those tricky words, but I know that you can figure out how to use it because you're so smart. All right, readers, as you go to do your independent reading today, I want to talk to you about how you can respond after you've read. So you may remember that I chose the book Lola at the Library as my independent reading book. Remember, the cover looks just like this. And my first assignment after IDL yesterday was to retell the story in words and pictures. I'd love to show you my work. So what I did is I drew a picture of Lola at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Then I used my words to tell what happened in those parts. So this one says, Lola is excited because it's Tuesday. She gets to go to the library. Lola sings at the library. She also gets to hear stories. Lola's mommy reads her a story before bed. And that's how it ended. It was a great story. And it's one that I've read lots of times because I love it so much. So for today readers, after you get done reading your independent reading book, I'd like you to think about your favorite part in your story. And then I would like you to draw a picture and add some words to tell about your picture. I love to show you mine. So what I did to get started is I wrote at the top, Lola at the library, and I drew a picture of my favorite part. My favorite part of the book is when Lola and her mommy go to the coffee shop after the library and Lola gets to lick the foam off her mommy's cappuccino. It's pretty fun. Now I'm gonna use my words to say what my picture shows. So I'm gonna get my pen, show you how I'm gonna do it. I know that sentences start with capital letters. So I'm going to use a capital letter to start my sentence. Lola. Lo, I'm going to use an O, and see how I'm making spaces between my words? 
and her mommy. Oh, I'm at the end of the line. I'm going to swing back over here. Go to the coffee. Now I want to write shop. Do you remember the two letters that make sh? That's right, S H. Shop. Now, you could really push yourself, I bet, and write one more sentence. A lot of times when readers are trying to explain things, they use the magic word because. So I'm going to say why this was my favorite part. Lola and her mommy go to the coffee shop. I like this because there's that magic word. Lola gets foam. Now, I bet you've had this problem before. Sometimes when I write so many great ideas, I run out of room. Oh well, I'll just put it underneath on the bottom. Foam. I'm gonna read you what I wrote. Lola and her mommy go to the coffee shop. I like this because Lola gets foam. Mm, delicious. Well, readers, that's our lesson for today. I'm so proud of your attention and your effort and how much you're growing as a reader. I can't wait to see you tomorrow for our next lesson. Bye for now.